I was born in London and when I was still a child my parents moved out of London to a town called Luton which has an airport which you may be familiar with and that's where I spent my childhood. I, I grew up in the town there and we lived on the edge of town when I was a teenager, which was great. I could go and walk or cycle in the countryside and hills very easily. My mother's a cellist, so actually I was, uh, I was introduced to music before I was even born. Uh, and then as a kid, I, w I loved to sing. I sang in choirs, I sang in musicals, I sang all sorts of things. And so that was my first musical passion. The viola sort of came into my life when I was eight years old. And there was a concert at my school where all of the local peripatetic teachers played a short piece and the viola teacher played the theme tune from Harry Potter. And so I said, I'll do that one, please. And that's how I began, although really not seriously at all at first. I still thought of myself very much as a, as a singer uh, in, in musical terms. And it wasn't until my voice started to break uh, then I just... I really wanted to play music, I wanted to have something to express myself with and suddenly the voice wasn't the best medium anymore and all of that uh, joy of music suddenly went into the viola and that's when I actually started practicing and started taking it seriously so I guess I was 12 or so and suddenly the viola took over my life. I studied at the Royal Academy for my bachelor's from I guess I was 17 until I graduated I think just as I turned 21 and then I came to Kronberg which was um, yeah an amazing three years of, of, of my life. I remember being actually just surprised at having such a good good atmosphere there were all these people who had won all these competitions when they were when they were teenagers and I think of myself in a sense as a latecomer to the viola but I also remember being really overwhelmed coming into this into this fairly small place actually. The academy is quite a small building and and then there was Christopher Schenbach there or there was Simon Rattle there or all these sort of legendary musicians being sort of four or five foot away from me. But I learned a lot about the characters of humans and, and artists and musicians and these people who I viewed on a godlike status and, and understanding that they're they're human beings too, albeit extremely yeah, impressive in many, many respects. I may be an outlier here because I feel that everyone should have the opportunity to hear music and, and, and everyone should have the opportunity to learn music. And I think that's really important. I think it's very important for, for people to be introduced to music at a young age and, and to be introduced to all sorts of music. And in fact, there's another point of contention amongst um, colleagues of, of mine these days of the role of social media in our lives. And I have also slightly conflicting opinions about social media because on the one hand, it can eat up hours of your time and, and brainwash you and, and you can spend 45 minutes and not have a clue what you've just done with yourself. But on the other hand, p people can learn and experience a lot through these online platforms. And I think that is inevitably an important thing for the next generation. I think that music education in schools is, is really important as well. But I, I think if, if people have the exposure and the chance to, to study at a young age and to, to pursue the things which interest them, then I think that can only be a good thing for society in general, for classical music, for, for all of the arts, but, but also generally in society. Like with anything, you have to develop a taste for it. When I first tried sushi, I thought, what's, what's this all about? And I didn't know any of these things that people will spend huge amounts of money on. And the first time they probably didn't like it. Uh, yes, so sushi and, and, and wine, just to name a couple of them, which can go to extortionate prices. But um, I, I think music is, is very much the same, that you develop an appreciation, like with pretty much everything in, in, in life. And, and the familiarity definitely helps to feel comfortable and to be more engaged with it. As long as people have the opportunity to experience, I, I think there's always some people who, who, who something sparks with them and then they, then they fall in love with it. And that's the, the most interesting thing uh, for me. To be really honest, I, I, I'm quite happy listening to lots of different things, but these days I tend to listen to less 
music and, and more podcasts and, and audiobooks, to be honest, because I, I often spend the whole day playing music or, or hearing concerts. And so I consume a lot of music in these these mediums. And, and, and then actually, I, I kind of like to have peace in between, because I think it's a very modern phenomenon that we listen to music all the time. You go and sit down in a restaurant or a cafe and there's something playing in the background and then you put on your headphones while you're traveling and then... And, and so I think if we expose ourselves too much to music, then we kind of lose the desire for it almost and it just becomes... Uh, yeah, it, it fades into the background. So, of course, when I was a teenager, I listened to music all the time and I was always listening to CDs and I, I often had my, my headphones on too. But these days I appreciate stillness b b between my musical encounters and, and I quite like to, to learn about other things in the world as well uh, through, through audible formats. Relaxed, ambitious, curious. Thank <laughs> you.